Hi, Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts, dealing with the demonic, the doors, and the authority we have. I want you to hear a little something, something. I want you to chew on it. I'm going to do an illustration I just did in the other video. It'll be a little bit more elaborate. This is the demonic. These are what? The different games. Uh, you're, you, you know, you're in the dark side where these demons from hell are casting all, all kind of spells, wizards, witches. Ooh, how fascinating. Tarot card reading. Ooh, spooky. Ouija board. That's fun. Watch this. Mm-hmm. Right. And you play. And you dabble. Ooh, fascinating. Well, let's get a bunch of guys together. Come on, you guys. Let's have fun. Ooh, look what I found. Isn't this fascinating? Do you like this? Ooh, it's interesting. And there's some supernatural. <sighs> there are powers associated with this. Ooh, this is so cool. Wow. Check it out. You want to check it out? You would play? Okay, anyway, let me show you how this works. And, oh, my goodness. If you only knew what happened last week when I did that, I was shocked. And I mean, last month, oh, I, we're getting more and more powerful. I'm telling you. We're getting more, more, and, more and more powerful. Hang on a minute. Hang on, uh, just a minute. It is just a game. <laughs> Come, this thing won't let me go. Let's go. I don't know what's wrong. got a hold on me. Yeah, that's what demonic does. The demonic gets a hold on you because you have opened the door. You have invited it in to set a spell so you could have something to play with. Yeah, well, guess what, baby? It's not a game. It's not a toy. It is set on the fires of hell itself. But you want to play. Okay. Now I know some of you have heard about sleep paralysis. Some of you have heard about bed shaking in the middle of the night. Some of you have heard about people walking down the street and it just seemed like something threw them down so they could fall and hurt themselves. Some of you have seen shadows in your house, heard voices, seen things move, had attacks on your body, your baby's body, your husband, your wife, your daughter's body, your son's, or their behavior gets weird and you're wondering why they're freaking out the way they are, why they go off the way they are. They never used to be like that. Why are they acting like that? Maybe it's the games you're allowing them to play on TV. They can play all day long and you don't even monitor what they are playing with. You allow them to watch movies. Some of you kids are fascinated by these movies with warlocks, which is Spells, incantation, hexes. Ooh, fascinating. Don't you wish you had that kind of power? Ooh, exhilarating 
And guess what? In time, things start happening. I know a woman who was given a Ouija board as a Christmas present. And after a while, it got so bad. She remembered walking down the street and having something slap her right across her face. But guess what? Nobody was around. Where did that slap come from? You tell me. My friend preached this morning at church and talked about how when she was young, this thing would come in her house and the whole room would get icy cold and it would put its hands around her neck and attempt to choke the very life out of her. Nobody was around. What was that? You tell me. You think you're playing with innocent games. You kids think that there's no harm in it. And you parents don't even check to see what is going on in your own house with your own children who you are supposed to have authority over if they don't have authority over you. And you just allow it. Anything that that adds up to the least resistance, you just don't bother because you don't want to deal with the attitude. You better deal with the attitude. If you're any kind of parent, you better deal with an attitude. Check those drawers, check the computer, check what they're playing with. Watch it yourself. Denounce it, rebuke it, tell them never do it again. And if you don't have authority in your household, you may have to chuck the dog on computer altogether. But you gotta, it, you know, the buck has to stop somewhere. There has to be um, a breaking point. Because if you don't break it down, it's going to break you down. It'll break your whole family down. And you think I'm being overly dramatic, which I can do. But I'm doing it for the sake of scaring you just a little bit. Because this is not a toy. When you open doors, you do not have the human capacity to close them. You cannot fight the spiritual realm with your mouth with your attitude, with your anger. Once you open up the box, baby, there's no closing it. Now, when you give your heart to the Lord, Jesus Christ, you invite him into your heart. You invite him into all your life, all your business. You give him authority over what pertains to you. And you're willing to obey. You're willing to develop a relationship with the Lord then you have to feed a new creature. You can't feed the old giants of your past. So you have to stop watching witchcraft. Stop playing with spells, incantations, all that nonsense. You have to stop it. Stop calling the psychic hotlines. Stop checking out the pornography. Stop it all, everything that you open yourself up to. It may not be supernatural. It may be sexonatural. But guess what? You've opened the door nonetheless. Willingly. So this is the way you have to think of demons. Demons are very, very legalistic. They know when they have a legal right to be where they are. And they know when you don't know if they have a legal right or not. If they are trespassing and you do nothing about it, they can stay and do what they want. Just like a spoiled brat. You don't get them under control. You don't straighten them out. They will tear your house down and you with it. Now with a demonic thing, there's more power. You don't always see what's going on. You don't always get it. But let me tell you, baby, I hope I'm scaring the boo-boo out of you because you need to be sobered up about this subject. This is very important. You can allow curses, 
into your family, into your household by allowing demons to run rampant in your house. If you ever, ever get a chance to buy a book, and I'm not talking about my three, I'm talking about another book called Pigs in the Parlor. And the whole premise of that is if you come home and you open the door to your parlor and there are a bunch of pigs wallowing and tearing up your parlor and, and it, it chopping down on your fabric and, and boo-booing on the floor and just messing things up. Are you just going to walk through the parlor, avoid them, and just hang out in the living room? No, you're going to drive those boogers out of there. And that's the way you need to drive everything about the demonic. everything about the demonic. You can't have that passive attitude. You have to take your house back by force. And you have to go get reinforcements. People from church who believe in fighting off demons, who know the authority they have in the name of Jesus Christ and use it. Every arsenal, the word, quoting the word of God, my husband, let me tell you this, I was sitting on my bed and I heard my husband ask his son to open the front door. The front door leads to the staircase, but he's sitting on the couch. He's not going anywhere. He's listening to the TV, 100% blind. And he says, uh, son, open the door, please. It's hot in here. He wanted cross ventilation. I'm telling you how powerful the word of God is. As I am sitting in the bedroom, I'm praying for him. But now I don't know that he's gotten off of the couch. I'm not aware of that. I'm in the bedroom with a wall between us. So I am all of a sudden moved to quote God's word over him. Psalms 91. And the Lord shall give his angels charge over Milton to keep him in all his ways, lest he dash his feet against a stone. In the name of Jesus, I'm declaring and decreeing God's word over him. No weapon formed against Milton will prosper. I declare and decree, blah, 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 bang. And I start hearing this, blang, -a -lang. I'm like, what the heck? Sounded like somebody just started throwing all kind of hard stuff up against the hallway door, which is on the left side of my bedroom. So I jump up, I go out, Milton is not on the couch. And I'm hollering, Milton, Milton, his son is out playing. He, after he opened the door, he ran down the stairs, he's gone. I'm hollering, Milton, where are you? And I see the front door open and I, my heart sank. And I went out and my husband's down on the second, on the second flight, you know, down on the second landing. And he's all curled up and the banisters all torn up. He did not know. He thought he was going one room. He got turned around. He wasn't using his cane. He's out the door, not feeling the threshold, missing it all together. And he thinks he's turning and he goes right down the flight of stairs, free fall, totally unbeknownst to him till he's at the bottom. I'm hollering, don't move, not screaming. I'm hollering because I know he's going to try to move and I'm telling him, don't move. I didn't know if he broken anything but I had quoted the word over his body. And I went downstairs and I held him. I said, do not move. And I touched every part of his body. Is there any pain? No, let me get up. Is there any pain? No, let me, I said, stop. Is there any pain? And I'm quoting scripture now. No weapon formed against Milton will prosper. I'm touching him all over, checking him before I help him move or else I'm going to run and call the paramedics. And I'm checking every single thing, his hips, his back, his arms, his toes, his neck, everything. Nothing swelled up. And I had him lay there a while so I could see. 
but I'm quoting scripture at the same time. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. By Jesus' stripes, Milton, you are healed in the name of Jesus. By the time we got up the stairs, sat him on the couch, made an appointment for an x-ray, no fracture nowhere. He walked on a cane for about two weeks from soreness. You know, legs, you're walking on your legs, you're feeling on your hip. No fracture anywhere. Not one chip, not one crack. Nowhere. The man was in his, he was pushing 70. Mm -hmm. God's word has power. God's word has way more power than anything a demonic entity can bring on you. But you have no right to use it if you're playing with the dark side. If you play with it, you're going to pay for it. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you play with it, you're going to pay. Leave that crap alone. Never dial. A hotline. Don't dial up sexual phone phone numbers so you can hear somebody talk dirty to you on the phone. Leave that crap alone too. You just you can't afford to play. There's too much at stake that that goes beyond your wildest imagination because half of you don't even believe in this crap. So you play with it only because it's fascinating and harmless fun. No, it's not. It's dangerous. It's like a baby playing with a grenade. You keep on playing and you see what happens. You don't have to take my word for it. Just keep on playing. 